happening? Happy New Year. Hope you guys are doing okay. It's a crazy world out there right now, isn't it? Yeah. So, we gonna do this? Let's do this. I've got in front of me on a on a uh, top of a tote here that I've got under the lights. Yeah, lights really crappy in here, guys. Um, I've got the majority of the seeds that I'm going to be planting in the greenhouse. Um, certain things I grew last year, just they didn't work out. I'm not entirely sure why. I know I had some issues in here. Uh, we're going to try and resolve some of those issues this year. Uh, last year was the first year that we built this greenhouse. I'm in my greenhouse, right? For those of you who haven't been following along, I built a greenhouse in my basement. I'm running LED lights. I've got a smaller one right there that's lighting me up and right on top of me, I've got the, the big monster. It's not turned on yet. I don't need it yet. Um, so things last year that, that we did that I'm not gonna do again. Um, I grew Brandywine tomato plants and they didn't produce. Um, I grew a bunch of cucumbers that didn't work out either. I think I had a problem with the seeds. Uh, we're going to do some things different. Uh, I grew a bunch of pepper plants and they got wiped out by, uh, spider mites. So I never got to eat anything off of that. Uh, we trellised zucchini that worked out. Okay. Except all I got was male flowers and I didn't get any female flowers. So unfortunately, I didn't get to eat any of the zucchini out of that either. Uh, we grew a bunch of Swiss chard and other stuff. And part of what I grew last year, I wanted to grow to see if it would work in here, right? Because, I mean, for those of you who don't know, I'm in Ontario and we're in the middle of winter. Saying that, if you look outside my house right now, I have green grass growing and it's December or January 5th ish. We should have feet of snow and minus 25 degrees Celsius, but my kids are outside playing in t-shirts. So one of the reasons I built this greenhouse is because I wanted to be able to feed my family healthy food that I grew myself, pesticide free, chemical free, all the rest of that straight up organic. You guys know how I grow food, right? So, like I said, some things worked, some things didn't work, um, and I try to learn from all of that. So this year we're going to change a few things up. I'm going to plant less varieties than I did last year, which will allow me to focus more on the varieties that I'm going to grow this year, right? Because Last year, the greenhouse got so full that I wasn't able to tend to what I was growing appropriately. And uh, some things had, um, they didn't get enough water because they were pushed away at the back. And it was a huge headache to pull everything out of the greenhouse to get to the back and water and then put everything back in. And I couldn't harvest right. And so things grew past when they should have and so we had some issues so we're going to switch things up we're going to grow more things that we generally just eat in my house on a on a much more regular basis and the other benefit to that is that come springtime when i have to start all of my seeds to plant out in the garden which i will be doing again this year guys i'm uh, about to book and pull the trigger on the two garden plots that I had again this year. So that'll be three years that I will be working in the same soil. So every year we work it, that soil gets better. So every year we're gonna have a more productive garden. All right, so saying that, um, right now the only thing, I'm looking at my seeds here. The only thing I haven't nailed down for sure is what variety of larger slicing type tomatoes I'm going to grow. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Uh, it's got to be a specifics though. It has to be an indeterminate variety and it needs to be big enough. I can slice up and, you know, put on a hamburger, make sandwiches, that sort of thing. I, I don't need big ones, you know, something baseball ish size. 
and it has to have a short day to maturity uh, cycle on it. 50, 60 days at most, anything more than that, um, it, it's going to take way too long and there's no point in me putting the effort to grow it before I'll end up tearing it down in the spring. Cool? So if you guys want to help, um, drop in the comments your, your varieties that you think tomato-wise could help me and I will go through all of them. I, I, guys, I literally read every single comment on every single video and I try to respond to every single comment that people leave me. So I will read it and I will comment on it, I promise. All right, so you guys want to see what I'm growing? It's not a huge list. Um, <coughs> there'll probably be a few more things I add in, but this is where I'm going to start, okay? And I'll explain why I'm growing certain things. as I All right, so let's start with lettuce, right? Right now, lettuce at the grocery store is like $4 for a head, and they're like this big. They're, they're tiny, they're, they're soft, they're not, they're not full heads like normal. So uh, I want to start eating a lot more salads. So we've got four kinds of lettuce. We've got uh, butter crunch. Here, I'll hold them up for you guys. It's a little glary in the light, I get it. There. So we've got butter crunch. That one's really nice. Sometimes you get that in the store and it's still alive it's in that plastic container with the roots that's generally the one you're going to get uh then we're going to go with a prize head lettuce that's mostly for sandwiches and stuff we're going to go with the red romaine i'm also go going with the romaine for a couple of reasons one it's pretty durable for a lettuce right and two we're going with the red because it's got anthocyanins in it and I'm trying to eat different colors of the rainbow because it's healthy and it's winter time and we need as many different vitamins in our diets as we can get, right? And then we're doing more of this. So these are, these are the same thing, just different packaging. So one's open, one's not. I've just got to figure out which one's what. Then, then we're going to do the Tommy Toad tomatoes because these are, uh-oh, wait a minute, hang on. We might have a problem, folks. Oh, crap. Okay, I need to order more of these because um, that seat pack's empty. Guess I should have figured that out before I turn the camera on, huh? We're gonna go grow Genovese basil because who doesn't love basil? Fresh basil, you can't beat fresh basil, right? We eat a lot of pastas and stuff here and I make my own sauces and whatnot. I have a whole lot of dried basil, but dried basil is nowhere near as good as fresh stuff. All right. We're doing Wisconsin SMR cukes, which are a smaller cucumber variety. Okay. One of the reasons is it's got a 50 to 60 day to maturity, right? And these are prolific. There's lots and lots and lots of these per plants. And I can put them in my kids' lunches. I can still slice them up, put them in salads and everything. And I don't have to wait for a longer cucumber to grow to be ready to eat. I'm, we're going to do smaller ones. And then I'll have way more to eat. We're going to do bunching onions. Because these things are just delicious, right? You can add them into your ramen and, and put them into your salads and sandwiches. And, you know, you can even pull them out of the ground. Dip them in some salt and eat them just like that. Scrumptious. Now, I'm going to start a couple of pepper plants. I don't know if I will actually end up being able to eat any before springtime. So these are kind of multi-purpose. I'm going to start them now. If I'm able to harvest peppers before spring, fantastic. If not, these plants will go outside into the garden and I will be eating peppers within a very short amount of time after they go outside through transplant shock and yada yada. So we'll see. And then we're going to do triple curled parsley because this stuff is just loaded with vitamins and it smells super good and you can chop it up and, and use it as a topping on your food and, and that sort of thing. We're going to do, these are sugar snap peas. 
I like these because you can literally just pick them right off the plant and eat them right then and there. Like I can literally just sit in the greenhouse and eat these things while I'm doing stuff in here. Or you can cook with them or you can dip them in ranch dressing or whatever, put them in my kids' lunches. And then in here, see if it'll focus. Uh, this is cilantro, right? So uh, I'm not going to plant. If you guys remember my cilantro plant from last year, I planted a lot of seeds in that pot. And I think it was just way too much seeds for the space available and the nutrients within the soil. So this year, I'm only going to probably do, you know, like a pinch of seeds in that pot instead of like growing it like a carpet because it just was unmanageable and too much to try and, and grow and take care of and the plants were pulling each other down as it grew. So so that's, that's basically where we're starting. And yeah, there's definitely going to be other things that I end up growing. But this is our, this is our starting point for this year. Um, and now I got to go find, I've got more of these. I bought three or four packs of these. So I just need to go and go through my massive seed bag and find another packet of these. So that's, um, that's where we're starting. I've already got a couple of things going in here. You guys want to see? Hang on, let's fix the tripod. I'll show you what we got. I've got to fold up the bottom here. I'll keep banging it. There. All right. Sorry for the jerkiness. Okay, so this monster plant, yeah, it's as big as it looks. This is the oregano I was growing in my backyard. So I have fresh Greek oregano. This monster, guys, is only three tiny little plants. Never grow oregano outside if you ever plan on having that space again without any oregano growing in it because essentially once you put this in the ground it's there forever you'll you'll need to take napalm to it to get rid of it uh this is horseradish uh we harvested horseradish at my buddy's place uh in the fall and i've got a bunch of jars of it in my freezer because that's the best way to keep horseradish fresh after fresh after you harvest it so Essentially, there's two plants that are growing out of a dual sort of top, right? So we've got one there and, and one over there. So we're going to grow this in here, and we're going to put that plant outside this summertime. And in the fall, I'm going to be able to harvest my own fresh horseradish. And then what I'll do is I'll just cut off the roots again underneath the top of the plant, and then I can just replant it again. <laughs> this disorganized mess you see right here is a friend of mine she's a teacher and her students planted all kinds of stuff in these little peat pucks right before uh right before christmas and she didn't want to leave them at school because she didn't want them to die at school because these little peat pucks are only good for about two days before you have to rewater them so there's all kinds of stuff in here but i mean look at this whole clump here, that's all turnip. So obviously, things have to be fixed up. So, uh, And then in that pot back there, I have four turmeric rhizomes buried in that soil. And I'm just waiting for them to sprout for me. And um, we're going to grow those outside come summertime as well. And we'll harvest those again in the fall. And that's, that's basically where we stand at the moment. So... I'm, uh, I'm going to go get a couple of seedling trays and I'm going to start, <coughs> uh, I'm going to put some of this stuff in seedling trays, some of the things like the cucumbers and the peppers and, um, and the tomatoes when I find the other package, I'm going to start those in paper towels. So I'll, I'll just do another video on that so you guys can just see it because I'm going to nick these cucumber seeds so they germinate much faster. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And um, and away we go. So, yeah, we're going to be eating food. Hopefully within, within a month, we should be eating some of the lettuce at least. And um, parsley takes a little while to get going. But once it gets going, it just grows like crazy. The onions, um, I'm not sure. We'll just probably harvest those as needed. Because I'm not just going to clear out the whole thing. So I'll probably succession plant 
the onions, I'll probably plant them in like a, like a spiral ring. And then that way, as I harvest, I can just succession plant. So it's just going to be a continual uh, spiral of, of green onions. So, all right, guys, uh, leave me a comment. If you guys aren't subscribed, you should really subscribe to the channel. And I'll teach you how to grow food in your basement. All right. Have an awesome day. Leave me a comment on those tomatoes, guys. Okay. See ya. Grow good food. Bye.